be the MC for the FAR International Film Festival, which is going to be held in the beautiful island of Mauritius. Uh, let me thank you, first of all, for your participation and for really uh, trusting this festival and uh, feel that it was important for you to participate. Yeah. Um, in two words, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Renee Garcia, and I am the director and producer and writer on the film Receding, the short film. Okay, let's talk about your film. Uh, where did the inspiration come from? How did it all start? Well, the story is actually based on a true story. So it's actually the life of, and our actress Sofia Novostrova is actually uh, the real person who actually went through the experience. So between her and her mom, we wanted to tell their true story of what it's like in the child's perspective eyes of having alopecia. Okay. So, yeah, that's a very sensible topic that you choose here. And I'm sure it's going to help and inspire a lot of people. We feel very proud to very show this movie. So um, is, it, is that all or you have other projects in mind that you're working on? Well, I'm actually... Um... Receding and my other film, Immigrant Mother, is both nominated at the Chandler Film Festival coming up. So I have a double. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And then Immigrant Mother is, uh, stars Crystal Fernandez from Telasso. Uh, if you've ever seen that, it won 20 Emmys last year. And Ooh, uh, so nice. he star yeah, he stars in that one. And uh, yeah, so I have that going. And then I'm attached to co-direct two features next year, one called Don't Take My Life Away and another film Ooh. called I Want a Husband. Okay, looks like you have a lot going on. <laughs> um, can you just, for all the filmmakers, especially independent filmmakers that are out here uh, struggling and striving to get their movies done, to get their film done, you have a message for them? Yes, uh, write from your heart, create stories from your heart because you will succeed. Don't make movies because you think you're going to appease other people. Make them because you truly, genuinely think they're a good story. Never give up. Go out there. We're independent filmmakers. Uh, go on Instagram. There's lots of film programs. There's people who are giving grants that will fund short films. And just make connections. You never know who's around you. There's lots of people who don't even work in Hollywood or, or make films. And if you say, hey, I want to make a film about this, you never know. Someone might be like, hey, I'll put some money into it. And then everyone wants to be a producer, right? So then you say, yeah, you'll, you can be a producer of my film. And this is my first time. Uh, Valentina, uh, she came in as an pro executive producer. It's her first time producing, and she just won Best Producer. So you never know when you bring in producers. So never give up. It is hard, but it's worth it at the end, especially when you have beautiful film festivals like you, and it plays on the big theater, and you're like, wow. I did all of that and I put all that together. It's It really is worth it. It makes you want to keep going out and making more films. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you, Rene, for all these nice words and keep the spirit, keep shining and thank you for everything. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Rene. And yeah, so best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> take care. Bye. Bye. Hello everybody, my name is Sofia Kudravtseva. I am the director originally based, uh, originally coming from Ukraine, but currently based in Luxembourg. Okay, so um, tell us a bit about your movie. Right, so it's a short documentary which I did um, as part of um, uh, a web series for the Festival of Citizens, Cultures and Migrations in Luxembourg. Um, it was commissioned by a non-profit organization to promote artists and promote uh, and like kind of like toggle the subject of migration in Luxembourg because here it's um, it's a big deal, I think, because around 40% uh, of people living in Luxembourg right now are uh, foreigners, expats. So um, only like a small percent percentage i mean compared to other countries are natives which is very interesting i think it's a it's a big uh, subject here so um this is why i did this and that's the film basically um it's a story about uh, an artist we know saudi um he's a wonderful person and he also had his own journey with 
immigration. Uh, he's originally from Nigeria, but he had traveled a little bit. And right now he's in Luxembourg and he's doing great, uh, which is important for me, which I was really happy because I was a bit um, cautious when I like heard about the project because I don't like to make these you know very sad stories i actually really like to make something positive and i uh, i didn't want to uh, present his story as like a story of a victim or a story of somebody who who struggles and there's just suffering and life is so hard and actually when i met we i was pleasantly surprised because he's such a positive person and he's also very successful which i think is important to like you know um tell a story of somebody who moves abroad and then they don't, uh, uh, I don't know, they don't end up in a shelter or they don't like, um, they aren't ostracized, but they just become part of the society and live a happy life and fulfilled and like in every sphere. So he does his art, but he also works and he helps people open their businesses and he has a very great girlfriend and they bought an apartment recently. So like everything's working well for him and yeah. So all is good, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so Sophia, um, let me ask you, what is um, your message through this movie? What are you trying really to let the world know through this movie? Uh, I know you've been very clear, but um, is there anything else that you would have want to? Is there, um, what's the main message behind the movie? So I would say it's like this uh, because like it explores a little, um, uh, the film explores the philosophy of Ui and at the end of the film, he says something like live, just live. And I think that's basically the message. I mean, this is just like that you should live and enjoy the moment and be present. And, and yeah, and I mean, everything else, it just comes, you know, just enjoy the moment live just live so i would say like this is not my personal message this because like as a in documentary you don't have like um i think like you have to always not only express what you think but really express their reality and i think that's his reality and that's his philosophy so i think that is also ultimately the message of the film do you think the movie has done its um work it has its impact on the general society in where you are and uh, eventually in the world. Do you think it has had its impact? I think, I mean, like the, the small impact that it can have. So I think the interesting part, like it had a bit of a personal impact and also I think a broader impact and I will cover both. So I, in terms of the personal impact, I think it was very interesting because after I finished the film, um, Uwe's girlfriend, Alexandra, who you who you see in the film, uh, she called me and she was almost tearing up. She was like, I am so grateful to you because you presented him this way and you did not try to like make it a voyeuristic experience for the for the Western audience because you really presented him the way I know him. I mean, like she, the way she knows him. And she was very, very grateful because she says it's like a great memory for us to like have this uh, period of his life captured and documented basically so it had some personal impact for sure and it was very pleasant because i did another documentary earlier and um also a short film and it wasn't um like it wasn't it didn't work so well because there i uh, it was the story was about the person and the person had their let's say um positive sides but also negative sides and the person was really embarrassed later to see on the screen like the negative sides portrayed and yeah. and we couldn't get it released and i mean i i wasn't sure if i wanted to get it released and you know yada 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 so this was not the case and here actually everybody was happy so that's really important for me and the broader impact i think which is interesting is that um i sent it to a few festivals and it's been accepted to a few festivals in africa and i think it's really interesting that uh it was like there was so much interest for this film in africa and i think it's really good for people to see how uh, a person coming from africa can live and feel in europe because i know that like some people are maybe considering immigration and i think it's really it's really interesting to see somebody who already made it you know in the west because um also 
I, I, I think a bit like from the Ukrainian perspective, because right now there's a lot of people in Ukraine leaving Ukraine or who already left because of the war. And obviously, like when people were li live, uh, leaving the country, I like they didn't know what to expect. So it's very I think it's very good to have like this first hand experience communicated to you. So how it is for somebody who moves abroad, how can the life be there for them? I so wish you... I wish you all the best for all the competition that you have entered. I hope your movie do great. I hope the movie gets worldwide recognition because it seemed to be a very wonderful job that you have done. I've been able to go through it a bit. So I wish you all the best for your movie. So now, Sophia, is there any um, special moment uh, but you want to share with us during the shooting, what was going on? Is there anything special that you want to share with them? Any experience, anything that happened that touched you during the shooting moment? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I think like um, the most maybe like interesting, but also difficult aspect of the shooting was that um, we had to go through certain trauma in the past. And that was the reason why he had to eventually leave Nigeria. Um, he talks about it in other interviews online. And there is like information about this online. Uh, he did not want to talk about this in the film. And I think like working with that was very was very special because like on one hand he told me his story in its entirety but at the same time he was very um he was very rigid that he doesn't want it to be placed in the film so basically the reason why he had to flee nigeria and um yeah, let's say some political struggles he had to face because of his beliefs um and which i i think like i mean i i do agree with his beliefs mostly so i I mean, I think it's actually a tragedy that uh, he couldn't express uh, what he really believed um, in Nigeria. But yeah, in any case, so he really didn't want to uh, talk about this experience in the film because he thought that like, he, and, and I agree with this, uh, that he is so much more than like a certain incident that happened in his life. And he's a person and he's a versatile person. And just working with that, for example, in the film, you see this uh, moment where there is a party and we is not he's not at the party so it was the party that happened after the opening of the exhibition part of which uh he was and he can and there was a dj and like we didn't know i mean we came to film it um and we had no idea that there would be a party um and we were like oh yeah maybe we can film you you know you go and talk about your works to the people and then maybe we'll film you at the party and you're having a good time but then what actually happened was that um uh, there was uh, like a techno music and uh, techno music has a lot of bass and he cannot listen to bass because he had a trauma like um and uh, he like um uh, he gets some kind of like uh, how do you call it like a post traumatic uh, yeah. Yeah. and the, and he cannot listen to it so like he couldn't even go inside the room and even being outside of the room was very painful for him but he still agreed that we filmed this because we thought it was very like it was real it was what really was happening so he really was brave enough to open up and let us capture this moment and i think that was like on one hand it was a very very difficult because like obviously like you're dealing with a real person and they are vulnerable you know they're like opening up before you but on the other hand i was really grateful that he was brave enough and courageous enough to open up and stay there and endure and like you know really show that again as any person he's also vulnerable and that's I think what makes his story more relatable to me and to the world, because you don't see just like a, uh, just a cover, you know, you don't see just like the, um, the attractive side, you see that it's a, it's a person who maybe does well in some respects, but on the other hand, uh, they have vulnerabilities. So yeah, I think that was a special moment. Yeah. Okay. That's very nice. And, um, it's everything that you're saying, I'm sure is going to be translated and reflected in the movie and i i think personally that people would absolutely love your movie so uh let me ask you you know the far film festival we are very supportive to independent filmmakers and at the same time we know that it's not easy 
to really make films when when you are independent and, and how are things in where you are in your in the country that you are right now how are things um uh, regarding um how easy or how difficult is it to really make a movie make a film make a documentary in terms of support in terms of, of facilities how are things thank you for this question this is a great question actually because it's been like a huge subject uh Uh, that we're debating here a lot and uh, for example right now I'm in the committee of a non-profit organization that actually tries to push for independent filmmaking in Luxembourg it's called Film Reactor ASBL uh, and we're we're trying to have a little revolution here because we feel like things are a little stale at the moment i mean they aren't the worst but they can be better and we'd like to bring about the better um so Basically Luxembourg is a very peculiar country because it's really really tiny. Um and it's like I think at the moment it's about uh, 600,000 uh, people, maybe a bit more now because the population grew but like still it's it's under a million like the population of the whole country. So it's really really small and uh obviously it's really hard to do something independently because there is a kind of monopoly i mean which which happens naturally you know when when you are in a bigger country you have a bigger market so you make a film and you have like more possibilities for selling the film and like making back the money you invested whereas in such a small country when you make a film uh, there aren't many places to sell it and like if you wanted to be successful or at least like you know uh be and not like not do it and and lose on on doing it uh then it has to be internationally successful so that's a little tricky but there is a huge uh support that comes from the government in luxembourg uh we have film fund here uh luxembourgish film uh, fund um and uh, it's a like a governmental institution that supports filmmakers which is a great one but on the other hand again like this creates a certain monopoly and um a certain like only a certain types of films get produced so we really are trying to push for like something more independent more different more daring with the non-profit organization that I'm talking about film reactor well, wish you best of luck for that also i really hope that the film industry in luxembourg um flourish and grow and expand and one question i ask um a lot of my fellow filmmakers filmmaking how come you came into it how come you you started what was that thing that really triggered you to become a filmmaker um it's it's uh it's very like it's been it's been a long time so i think i knew that i wanted to be a film director since i was eight years old but like back in the day i didn't know what it, what it meant to be a film director i think like my idea in my head was more related to like theater directing because i i had no idea obviously like at eight about all the technical aspect but how it started it started by like just i guess watching films and uh reading scripts we had um uh, at home my parents had a book uh which was like just uh, scripts for kids yeah. um for like kid i don't know maybe plays or cartoons or something and i was fascinated i mean i i opened it and i was fascinated by by the script that like it's just description of the action and it's just dialogue but it's like there's no these like fancy words and it's not uh, redundant it's just it it's just so precise it's like a, a set of directions and i was like wow you could write like that and then and then you could actually tell a story and you can just you know uh take something that you imagine in your head uh some image and you can have it on the screen and that really fascinated me so i think this is how it started and uh, later i mean i had a lot of back and forth because obviously uh, not everybody goes to pursue what they decided at eight years old but my parents were very supportive and i'm very lucky to have them be very supportive and later when i was 16 um uh i i was i was thinking that maybe i don't want to do filmmaking anymore because it's 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 a difficult life and it's hard to make your living with that so maybe i want to do something more pragmatic um and i thought maybe i want to do i don't know it maybe i want to go and study it and i told this to my parents and my mom said no that's freaking boring like don't do this like you're going to be bored and i was like well okay then i'll apply to a film school and i did <laughs> Okay. Sofia, any message 
you have for all the people out there? I think you're very blessed to live in such a beautiful place as Mauritius. I visited it last year, this year, oh. actually. I was there, yeah, in in February because my sister worked in Mauritius. Okay. Uh, so, so I think you're really blessed with this country and with this uh, like little paradise with sand and beach and and wonderful weather. So, just like I don't know, I guess just I hope you're happy and able to be present in the moment and appreciate it because because you're so 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 lucky and blessed. And yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Been a pleasure talking to you. Any project in the pipeline? Yes, I have a project actually. Um, it's a TV series, like okay. a web series maybe. So, mm. uh, and it's called Successful Success, and it's gonna be set in Luxembourg. And we started like some preparations already, but it's like a TV, yeah, TV show slash web show. I don't, I don't know because like there is no TV anymore, in in the real sense. But uh, yeah, and it's basically a show about. Uh, the experts hustling for money in Luxembourg. So okay. yeah, but like in a in in a funny way, you know. So we all here at the Far Film Festival wish you best of luck for your upcoming project, and thank you again for giving us your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.